location, anywhere and everywhere, bringing the world into your home. Journey to Adventure, television's longest-running travel show, with your host and guide, Gunther Less. A country whose history continues uninterrupted from prehistoric times to the present day. A country whose predominating elements are its language and its national traditions, which for centuries have preserved the country's identity and awareness. A country which truly can be called a tourist paradise. Journey to Adventure will take you on an odyssey to Greece. We come with a camera to record our cultural roots on film. But what delights us most, personally and photographically, is the charm of Greece today and the character of its people. In the Greek language, there is one word for stranger and guest, xenos. We are welcome here, welcome to share the attractions, diversions, and the natural beauty of Greece. There is much to share and much to photograph. Athens was the center of ancient Greek culture, and it remains a great city today, a city of contrasts. In the center of Athens is a high place, Acropolis in Greek. Here, visitors are impressed by the quiet dignity of the Parthenon and other examples of classic architecture. The city below is far from quiet. It's a bustling cosmopolitan center of commerce. About nine million people live in the country of Greece. More than a third of that total population lives here in Athens. In front of the House of Parliament is Constitution Square, Syntagma Square, a central gathering place for Athenians and visitors alike. Among its attractions are hundreds of pigeons who make a well-paying business out of entertaining young and old alike. These kilted mountain troops are marching to Constitution Square. The tomb of the unknown soldier is here, and we're about to see the changing of the guard. The traditional uniform is from the northern section of Greece, and the formal march steps are like none you've ever seen. The last maneuver is a Greek version of the command, fall in. Dance is another ancient art that remains a vital part of Greek life. They may not all be professionals, but all Greeks are dancers. These are professionals. They are the Dora Stratu dancers, performing a variety of folk dances from different regions of the country. The art of dance is traced back to ancient festivals in honor of Dionysus, the god of wine and revelry. If you look closely, you can see how these traditional dance steps could lead to the more refined art of ballet. Those who are not trained in ballet find other ways to add a special flourish to their dancing. You'll find them performing in tavernas, the friendly and lively little restaurants located everywhere in Greece. They'll be dancing to the music of the bouzouki, a stringed instrument that creates the unique sound of popular Greek music. Here's someone who's determined to perform a dance that cannot be topped. Except, of course, by placing another table on top of the first table. Whoppa!
The second largest city in Greece is Thessaloniki, located in northern Greece. Among its pleasures are excellent restaurants, and they observe a custom familiar throughout Greece. You are invited into the kitchen, where you select your meal from a display of tempting choices. To accompany your meal, you can try a wine that is flavored with pine rosin, an unusual native wine called Retsina. Part of the fun in Greece is traveling from island to island, plotting a course that leads to new and different places. One popular way to sample the variety of the islands is by cruise ship. Cruises are designed for relaxation and pure pleasure, and among their most pleasant moments are mealtimes. Cruises are scheduled so that much of the distance between ports is covered at night. During daylight hours, there's time to enjoy the activities on board and to visit the island stops along the route. Our destination is the Kiklodis Island Group, known for its whitewashed villages, windmills, and tiny chapels. Ahead of us is the rim of a volcanic crater. In the Bronze Age, a tremendous eruption was centered here. The sea swallowed up islands and an entire civilization was destroyed, the early Minoan culture. The main island formed by the towering cliffs of this crater is called Santorini. Perched high above is the peaceful whitewashed town of Terra. A long winding stone path leads to the town. It's an easy walk if you're walking down. Going up, you can hire a ride from the island's unusual taxi service. The trip is slow, but sure. The island of Santorini is a world apart from the island of Corfu. And that difference is what delights us as we travel among the Greek Isles. Different sights and surroundings. There are different details to photograph as a visual diary of each day's experiences. Excavations on Santorini have exposed the remnants of an early city encased in volcanic ash. It's been called the second Pompeii. Others claim this is the city Plato called the lost city of Atlantis. For the ultimate and leisurely seagoing, there is yachting. A seaworthy vessel, captain and crew are supplied. The destinations are up to you. And so is the schedule. <laughs> Watching from the bow of the boat, you enter a storybook harbor, sheltered by the surrounding island of Idra. Idra is a favorite retreat for artists and writers, among others who appreciate its serene atmosphere. There are few cars on any of these small islands, but here, there are none. There is little for visitors to do in Idra except to stroll its streets, browse in its boutiques, and enjoy its quiet beauty. The style of life in the island appeals to the soul of an artist, and the images appeal to the eye. Peter Apostolis has lived an artist's life on the island of Mykonos. Despite the fact that uh, Mykonos is a very quiet island, there always seems to be a hum of activity on the harbor. A very, very popular dish is uh, octopus, which takes quite a bit of preparation. After the octopus is caught, the fisherman's got to stand on the harbor 
and throw it to the ground 100 times to uh, tenderize the meat. And then it's uh, washed and sort of scrubbed down on uh, the cement, and this further tenderizes it. The Maconians, to me, are uh, very, very wonderful and warm people. They're very, very friendly. They have been good to me. As I walk through the Maconian streets, just coming to work in the morning to the art gallery, I've got to say hello and stop to talk to at least 20, 25 people. It's a half hour to walk 30 meters, you know, but that's, that's part of life here. The unique character of the Greek people is difficult to define. Peter expresses it in his paintings. It is expressed in words by Maya Sakalaridou. She explains some of the qualities that distinguish the most Greek of all Greeks, the people of her native island of Crete. Cretan people are very proud for their islands, for their heritage. It's there for 4,000 years. And it's a constant struggling for survival. At the same time, they know how to enjoy the life. All this heritage that they have, it springs up to their character, even outside appearance. They are tall men, very proud, wearing the boots, wearing that black scarf, which is the traditional costume. And the boots have a practical reason, to walk all that rough land up in the mountains. They say that in Crete, generally in Greece, women are, have a low position, which is not true. Maybe it's the wrong impression that you get, because they're all working, making themselves productive. It's not easy to make a living, so they all make themselves productive. They all knew how to weave the truth of their daughters and they do it also to sell and get some money out of it. And they make all these things with much love. The ties of the families are very close. So when a family gets together and they want to have a nice evening, the liar comes first to entertain the people. And then the songs, they all sing together, accompanied by the liar. The lyre is used uh, as a traditional instrument. The Greeks have buzuki. Now all over Greece you hear buzuki. The traditional instrument here is lyre. To be Greek is to be intensely devoted to two things above others, the family and the church. Families and the community join together in religious celebration. Father Basil, a priest of the Greek Orthodox Church, describes the symbolic pageantry of a Greek Orthodox Easter as observed on the island of Patmos. The priests now led by the icon of Christ the Bridegroom are leading down to the center of the village where the reenactment of the washing of the feet will take place. The principal celebrant in this particular case in Patmos being the abbot of the monastery or Ivumeno will take Christ's place and reenact the washing of the feet of the disciples. Holy Week in the Orthodox Church takes you on an emotional journey that explores the full gamut of human emotions from despair to hope, from death to life, from triumph to betrayal, from destruction to resurrection. It is a total renewal of both the community life and the religious life. A number of services from the Saturday of Lazarus through an eight-day period ending up with the resurrection of Christ and the agape service, the service of love, on Easter Sunday could encompass 20 services. These services run from an hour to perhaps three and a half, four hours. One candle becoming many candles. Vefte lavete fos, come receive the light. The church totally darkened, jammed with the faithful as they come forward to receive the light of Christ. The gospel is read proclaiming that resurrection and the words that culminate the week Christ is risen are proclaimed. And in one of the hymns we hear it is the day of the resurrection. Let us be glorious in splendor for the celebration, a true celebration of life. On Sunday afternoon, the celebration continues. Families gather and the feasting begins. There is a special quality to life in Greece. It relates to the people to their customs, to the glories of the past, to the beauty of the land and the waters that surround it. 
Even the sunlight seems special here, adding a bright sparkle to everything you see.